What? Really? Yep, same as the previous comment. Uh-huh, I gotcha. Yes sir, learn my lesson. Well, that's what I get for not studying the Intel Arc page. Who'd have thunk Intel would gimp their own product? Speaking of gimping your own product... So, today we're checking out another mini PC in Intel's Alder Lake N lineup, featuring the slightly cut down N95 CPU. It's housed in the B-Link Mini S12 with 256GB of storage and 8 gigs of RAM for $199 US dollars. B-Link sent me this unit as a free sample. But unlike the marketing and sales channels on YouTube, we're going to see how this mini PC and the N95 compares against other products. And not just review it in a vacuum and say how awesome everything is. In the box, you'll find an AC adapter, long and short HDMI cable, a monitor mount, screws, and color manual. The unit itself is a simple plastic box. Build quality is good, and it doesn't creak or flex, but the plastic looks and feels kind of lower grade. Compared to the Morphine M9 with its metal case, it really is a big difference. For those of us that care about such things, I f care. One thing that older Lake N units have been lacking so far is USB ports. Just like the Morphine M9, the B-Link Mini S12 has only four, with two USB 3 10 gigabit plus audio jack at the front, and another two at the rear. USB-C is missing. A gigabit LAN jack and dual HDMI 2.0 make up the remainder and it's powered by a barrel jack. AZW manufactured mini PCs, just like the B-Link Mini S12, are usually easy to open and this one is no exception. Remove the four exposed screws and pull on the rubber. Yes, that is what she said. Watch out for that SATA ribbon cable. Okay, so there's a 2.5 inch SATA expansion, which is nice. Wi-Fi is soldered on and is the Intel AC3165, which launched in 2014. I shit you not. Didn't know it still existed. Anyway, the M.2 NVMe drive does have some cooling thanks to the thermal pad, which doesn't seem to cover the drive completely. And we have our single channel memory. The NVMe drive is labeled as AZW. Interesting. The CMOS battery is hidden underneath. While you get Windows 11 Pro out of the box, Ubuntu worked without issue off the USB. Chrome OS Flex failed to boot, and I know many of you will be completely devastated. Normally I'd hit the benchmarks now, but I do need to go over the BIOS first, as there's more than meets the eye. AZW made the decision to set the N95's power limit, or PL1, to just 20 watts when it can handle more. This greatly affects CPU performance, as you'll soon see. PL2 is set to 30 watts, but it never pushes past PL1, so changing the PL2 limit does nothing. We'll go into more detail about power limits later. But first, let's look at the benchmarks. And I've included each power limit result, because all I'm interested in is the performance of these minis, and not just trying to sell you something. I need a new <laughs> ring, damn it! When it comes to single core, Intel's Alder Lake N CPUs completely thrash last year's effort, which makes for a very nice and snappy Windows experience. The N95 matches the N100 at 25 watts and up. By increasing the power limit, there's an extra 5% performance increase in this benchmark, which is a giganormous 52% improvement over the N5095 Gen on Gen. Let's not mince words here. That shit just doesn't happen very often. The multi-core benchmark tipped me off to a low power limit, and look at that 20 watt result. That's only a measly 4% improvement over the N5095, and far behind the N100. But at the 30 watt limit, the N95 was within reach at just 4% behind, which is a 27% improvement over last gen. Cool. Not as big as a single core, but I'll take it. I don't have Cinebench R23 data for everything, but if you were wondering how the Mini S12 holds up over a 10 minute test, it performed as expected. But when it comes to video encoding, at the 20 watt power limit, the Mini S12 did pretty poorly, with previous gen Celeron Minis completing the task faster. At the 30 watt limit though, it pulled ahead 23% gen on gen. Again, it's only 4% behind the N100. Graphics tests are up next. But Rob, 
Where are the different power limits for 3D Mark? Well, that's the thing. Pumping more wattage into it only affected CPU performance. Whether you're at 20 watts or 30 watts, the integrated graphics didn't see any improvement that couldn't be chalked up to margin of error. Still, I was pretty impressed with what this single channel cut down graphics chip came back with in DX11. It's basically like the higher end N5105 and another huge 47% ahead of the N5095. Gotta love that gen on gen action. It's also 17% behind the N100. In DX12, the N95 falls behind the N5105. Still, it's a 51% improvement gen on gen, and again, 17% behind the N100. The included AZW SSD is one of the slowest Gen 3 NVMe drives I've benchmarked, but keep in mind, it's still faster than a SATA drive often used in budget mini PCs. So there's that. For the game and emulator tests, I thought about which power mode to use. I do these tests to see how the benchmarks translate into a real CPU and GPU workload. No, I don't game on them. But if you are actually going to use this as an eSports or emulation box, you want to max out its CPU performance to 30 watts to get the best frame rates. And the 30 watt setting is where hardware info started reporting CPU power limiting kicking in. That's why I didn't go any further. Okay, so let's check out the N95 versus the N100 and the fastest budget CPU of last year, the Pentium N6005. Overall, Valorant runs a bit worse than the N100, which is as expected. While I found the Pentium to be unplayable in an esports game like this, both the N95 and N100 do a pretty good job of pumping out the frames, even though you'll get the odd dip into the 40s for both. I think the N95 and 100 provide a decent entry level experience with this game. And both the new CPUs also beat the Pentium in one of the toughest to emulate PS2 games. Neither hits full speed, but the N100 is still over 10% faster. And again, the modern chips seem to have the upper hand in this GameCube emulation test, but it's still far from getting a smooth 60 FPS. In Mario Kart Wii, the added graphics power of the Pentium allows it to hit 60 FPS. But look at that CPU usage compared to the N95 and N100. They're clearly bottlenecked by their iGPUs. So, out of the box, this unit has gimped CPU performance. Single core is okay, but 20 watts for multi-core holds it back. Luckily, it's something you can fix within a couple of minutes. All you need to do is mash the delete key when powering on the unit. Head to advanced, power and performance, CPU power management control. Now changing the PL1 here doesn't work. You need to go into View Configure Turbo Options. Then change the PL1 to 25,000 for 25 watts or 30,000 for 30 watts. Press the Escape key to go back in the menus and head to Save and Exit and choose Save and Exit. You're all done. Unfortunately, the iGPU can't be overclocked. 1200 MHz is within spec. The only other mildly interesting option is that you can mess with the fan curve. But eh, the default works fine. Idle power draw of the B-Link S12 Mini is the same as the N100. Max power draw from the wall was interesting. Each 5 watt increase only showed as an extra 1 watt maximum. And overall, the N95, even at 27 watts, draws quite a bit less than the N100, which hit 34. Upping the power limit also does make a difference to max CPU temperature. So if you're worried about these temps, I'm not. But if you are, then maybe 25 watts is the best compromise. SSD NVMe temp is good thanks to included cooling. And the drive not being very fast also helps with thermals. Unlike the others, this is one budget drive that actually has a temp sensor on the controller. Noise levels are also very good. The Mini S12 is basically silent at idle and barely audible under load. It's 
to one of the quietest, actively cool budget mini PCs around. Happy days! So with all that, I think we should wrap it up with the pros and cons. B-Lynx S12 mini PC performs well if you up the power limit in the BIOS. I didn't expect the N95 to hold up as well as it did, especially in the graphics department. The S12 is a very quiet mini PC and includes NVMe SSD cooling, which is rare in the budget space. It also comes with a 2.5 inch SATA bay for additional storage. However, it lacks USB ports, especially C. Performance is gimped out of the box, the Wi-Fi chip is soldered on and outdated, and it's not powered by USB-C. Looking at the overall package, it's a pretty good pre-built box with older lake N. Problem is, last year's units are getting discounted, and some of them excel in other areas such as port selection, which for some, will be the deal breaker. I think the single core performance of Alder Lake N is very important if you plan to use it as a basic desktop PC. It makes the last gen units feel sluggish in comparison and is a big advantage of the new CPUs. If you're wanting to get a bare bones Alder Lake N unit instead, do check out my Morphine M9 review featuring the N100. It's pretty good too. Cheers!